So pursuant to Standing Order 106 sub 4, the committee commences consideration of the request to undertake a study of recent events surrounding the expulsion of diplomats from the Government of India and the situation of foreign interference in Canada. We will, uh, I will pass the floor uh, to Mr. McGregor. Mr. McGregor, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and good morning to committee members. Um, I just first of all want to start off by uh, thanking everyone who joined with me in signing the 1064 letter. As you can imagine, it's pretty rare that we get unanimous support for an emergency meeting, but I think the revelations from the RCMP that were delivered to the Canadian public uh, on Thanksgiving Monday were nothing short of explosive, and I think they demand this committee's attention. Um, I will be moving a motion, Mr. Chair, and I know that the clerk uh, has both French and English copies available, hard copy and digital for members who are participating in person and online. But before I move the motion, I think it's important just to add a little bit of brief context because, of course, this is not the first time that we have been uh, witness to serious allegations involving the government of India and its agents in Canada. Uh, in fact, it was more than a year ago in May, sorry, in September of 2023 that the Prime Minister stood in the House of Commons and leveled these accusations against the government of India, accusing it and its agents of nefarious criminal activity, of election interference, a whole host of things. Um, and, I, and needless to say, for the Prime Minister to, to rise in the House of Commons and make such a statement, uh, that did make headlines around the world. Uh, since then, of course, uh, we've had the Hogue Commission release an interim report that was in May of 2023. And if you read that report, you, you can see that there are broad mentions of India's interference in Canada throughout that report. And then, of course, in uh, June of 2024, the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians released its special report on election interference. Uh, which again mentioned the activities of the government of India throughout it. So that brings us, Mr. Chair, uh, to October 14th, 2024, this, this past Monday. Uh, and for the RCMP, indeed for any police force that is conducting an active investigation to come out with such explosive revelations, I think underscores just how serious this is. And I think the RCMP made a point that they were doing this because some individuals in Canada uh, had their lives uh, directly in danger and, and the threat had reached such a level that they felt compelled to ignore the traditional way of going through the judicial process and make these accusations public so that particularly members of the South Asian community whose lives might be in danger could be forewarned and so that we could be remaining extra vigilant. So um, I also think, Mr. Chair, that, you know, uh, the House of Commons and the Senate came together quite quickly in June of this year to pass Bill C-70, which, of course, contained important legislative measures to deal with foreign interference. So I think with all of these events coming together and culminating in what we saw on Monday, I think it is quite appropriate for this committee to be seized with the matter. And with that in mind, I would like to move the following motion that pursuant to Standing Order 1082, the committee undertake a study concerning the electoral interference and violent criminal activities carried out by agents of the government of India, as identified by the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians report and the RCMP's report from October 14, 2024, and the subsequent expulsion of six diplomats from the government of India. As a part of this study, the committee hold no less than six meetings, ensuring an equal distribution of time for witnesses and invite the following ministers, senior officials, and expert witnesses from impacted communities and academia to provide briefings. One, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Honorable Melanie Jolie. Two, the Minister of Public Safety, the Honorable Dominic LeBlanc. Three, the RCMP Commissioner, Mike Duhem. Four, National Security and Intelligence Advisor, Natalie Druen. Five, experts from Canada's South Asian community. Six, 
Brampton Mayor Patrick Brown and any former leadership candidates of the 2022 Conservative Party leadership race, and seven national security subject matter experts. With that, Mr. Chair, the motion is so moved. I hope copies have been distributed to members and I will give my time back to the chair. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, McGregor. Uh, we'll, go to, we'll start the debate now. I see that Ms. May has her hand up. I'm sorry. Mr. Chair, I may need unanimous consent to be allowed to speak, but I have had a top secret security briefing from Natalie Drouin and from the new head of thesis, Daniel Rogers, and I'd appreciate an opportunity to support the study and also to suggest a reason that beyond the one that Alistair just mentioned for why it was that the RCMP had to go forward and make this information public because there's a larger context that has to do with having to disclose in the criminal activities that have, criminal consent. charges that have already been brought. Hold up for just a minute, please. I'll just give me a So um, I, I understand that as a member of the House of Commons, you, you, you can participate. You do not require unanimous consent. And uh, so I'll, I'll let you carry on. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to, wanted to add some more context. I know I'm not a member of the committee, but as a leader of the Green Party, I have top secret security clearance. And as a leader of a party, all party leaders in the opposition have received briefings from Natalie Drouin, the National Security and Intelligence Advisor to the Prime Minister. And I also on that call was with the newly appointed head of CSIS, Daniel uh, Rogers. The, the context in which they had to go forward was that they uh, were aware that the RCMP was aware that the criminal investigations that are ongoing required that the defense counsel for people engaged in the criminal prosecutions for the murder of, of course, um, Hardeep Singh Niger, that, that this, much of this was going to have to be disclosed in court. And they were also aware that six diplomats and their proxies were involved in an active continuing ring that represented a threat to Canadians. So I'm not taking anything away from what my colleague, Mr. McGregor, has said, just to say that that's an additional reason for the urgency that led the RCMP to take these uh, this additional information, which is absolutely chilling, to make it public. That was another part of that context. So I'd, uh, I'd like to participate in the hearings going forward. I promise not to take much of the committee's time. I just appreciate the opportunity to say that where we have had briefings and some of us have more information than others, I think all Canadians should have the same kind of briefing uh, that I received, just with the care that's taken to say this part here has to stay behind uh, an absolutely secure wall for national security reasons. The rest can be shared with Canadians so they understand why uh, there is the need for the sharing publicly of this information. Completely agree the focus on people who are most at risk because there's an active effort by a criminal network uh, with a coordination out of India to um, actually collect information on Canadians, things like when people are walking their dog and what normal pattern of life, what route they take. This, this couldn't be more significant and urgent that it be disrupted and that Canadians be, be reassured that the RCMP and CSIS and our intelligence apparatus are coordinating their work to protect Canadians' lives. I'll stop there. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Ms. May. We go now to Ms. Dancho, followed by uh, Madame Michaud, followed by Mr. Halen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. As has been past practice, when a motion is not provided to uh, members to review in advance, we provide you have provided a five-minute recess to review. So I'd ask for that five-minute recess to review the motion, please. Um, that sounds reasonable. Uh, we will uh, suspend for five minutes. We carry on uh, with uh, Ms. Dancho. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, and 
certainly the allegations of the RCMP are extremely concerning and must be taken very seriously by all parliamentarians and certainly by this committee. And the allegations of what India has done on Canadian soil represent an outrageous assault on Canada's sovereignty and are completely unacceptable. Foreign interference from any country, as we know, including from India, must be put to a stop. The first job of the Prime Minister and Canadians and the Canadian government is to keep citizens safe from foreign threats. That is the first job of the Prime Minister and the Canadian government. And the first job of the official opposition, of course, is to hold the government accountable for their ability or lack thereof to prevent foreign interference and to keep Canadians and people in Canada safe from foreign threats. And we certainly expect the full criminal prosecution of anyone who has threatened, murdered, or otherwise harmed Canadian citizens or people on Canadian soil. And the Public Safety and National Security Committee, as we know, has the responsibility to look promptly into this matter in a professional matter and thoroughly on behalf of Canadians and all those who have suffered in Canada as a result of the federal government failing to prevent foreign interference over these last number of years. So, Mr. Chair, I just did want to mention that, that the Conservatives on this committee and uh, the official opposition at large certainly take this matter very seriously and are deeply concerned that the situation under the Liberal Prime Minister continues to worsen for Canadians. It is shocking to learn that there may be that there are, are uh, as per the RCMP, 13 individuals who are facing an imminent threat, as bad as murder potentially, from a foreign government, notably from India. So we are very seized with this issue as Conservatives, and certainly on this committee, we are, of course, reviewing the motion put forward by Mr. McGregor. We thank him for bringing forward his 1064 letter, and of course, we're keen to sign it so that this committee can look into, into this matter very very thoroughly. So thank you, Mr. Chair. I did want to include my thoughts on this. I believe my colleagues would like to as well. Thank you. We go now to Mr. Upal, followed by Mr. Halen, followed by Ms. Lansman. I'm sorry. I apologize. I apologize. Uh, next is uh, Madame Michel. Allez-y, s'il vous plaît. Désolé. Pas de problème. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, tout d'abord, j'aimerais remercier M. McGregor d'avoir euh, proposé cette réunion d'urgence. Le Bloc québécois n'a pas hésité à la signer euh, parce que c'est un enjeu. This is an extremely uh, concerning issue, and I had a concern initially whether we would be asking R the RCMP to come to committee to learn more about because they already re revealed a lot, well, because there's an investigation underway. But when I look at the witness list, I find this very reasonable. And I think uh, we're learning more with various witnesses uh, that could come. So I agree with this motion. I just have a question in terms of the translation. It's not uh, very good with respect to witness number six. In English, they talk about former leadership candidates. And in, in French, they say all former candidates. So we need to perhaps clarify this with Mr. McGregor. Do we want to have just any candidate to, from the Conservative leadership race from 2022 or all of them? So that's something that needs to be clarified. But the Bloc is in favour of this motion. Thank you. Um, Madam Michaud, if perhaps you could make that as an amendment, uh, offer that as an amendment to, to ensure that the... Perhaps it's a clarification because right now both versions don't say the same thing. So I just would like to know if to Mr. Mr. McGregor would like to have have all former leadership candidates appear or just any. So I won't move an amendment because I'm not sure which is the proper version. Probably the English one. It does. He, I'm assuming he means any. I'll ask uh, Mr. McGregor to clarify. Uh, if you'd like to jump in quickly. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, the word is any. That's uh, how I intended it in the English version. And I'm sorry if it didn't come out clearly in French. Uh, I guess we'll make that, take that as a friendly amendment for the French version as well to inco incorporate that as any. Uh, C'est bon, Madame Michel? All right, Madame Michel, that's okay. Yes? Okay. Um, we're going now to uh, Mr. Upal. Thank you, Mr. And um, again, we are uh, dealing with a very serious issue after hearing from the RCMP of the uh, allegations that they have made against uh, uh, Indians, uh, agents of the Indian government. Um, we heard uh, 
accusations of murder on Canadian soil, extortion, uh, use of organized crime, intimidation, and coercion. This is a matter of our uh, protecting our sovereignty, protecting our democracy. And, um, and it's important for us as, as a committee and, uh, to be able to get answers for Canadians. It is, it is important that uh, any, any government's first duty is to protect the safety of Canadians. And, of course, to take steps to stop foreign interference here in Canada. And we want to ensure that uh, this government take national security seriously. The, the Prime Minister at The Hague Report himself admitted that, uh, that for a number of years that Indian um, in government has been uh, committing uh, foreign interference here in Canada, and yet we can, this has continued, this has gone on. We have seen in the U.S. In, uh, where the Americans have been able to um, stop incidents of uh, murder and assassination in the U.S., but unfortunately that has not happened in Canada. Arrests have been made earlier in the U.S. That has not happened in Canada. And I think it's important that uh, we as a committee look into the reasons for this and so we can look at what are the gaps between, uh, that, uh, to best uh, protect Canadians to protect our democracy, to uh, protect our sovereignty, and to ensure that Canadians are kept safe. Thank you. Thank you. We go now to Mr. Hallen. <clears throat> Thanks, Chair. Um, appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak on this. Uh, I think that Monday's revelations by the RC, these very, very serious revelations by the RCMP on Monday came uh, as might be a shock to many, but I will say to many in the Sikh community, um, this is a, something definitely about foreign interference. The, the Sikh community knows well and has been talking about for more than 40 years in, in Canada. We're at a very critical point now in our, um, our the history uh, for this very, very important issue on foreign interference that's, that's being committed. Um, the RCMP, um, the allegations that they made, those serious ones, uh, I'd just like to read into the record. The RCMP, and this is from their presser, the RCMP has obtained evidence that demonstrates four very serious issues. The first one, violent extremists impacting both countries, India and Canada. The second one, links tying agents of the government of India to homicides and violent acts. The third, the use of organized crime to create Per perception of unsafe environment targeting the South Asian community in Canada. And the fourth, interference in democratic processes. Investigations have revealed that Indian diplomats and consular officials based in Canada leveraged their official positions to engage in clandestine activities. Um, so by far not uh, the lightest of allegations that have been made by the RCMP on, on foreign interference happening in Canada. Canadians should feel safe in Canada. Um, Canadians should be safe from extortions. Canadians should be safe from uh, murder. Uh, they should be safe and their families should be safe. We should be living in safe communities from, from threats of, of violence, uh, not just by anyone living here, but, but also from any foreign governments. Uh, after nine years, that's not how Canadians feel. We saw last year a Canadian was killed on Canadian soil allegedly by a foreign government um, in, in name India is, is what the RCMP has alleged or, or there's allegations towards it. So it, it's, a, it's a very difficult time in Canada right now after nine years of this Prime Minister. And I think that's why it's very important that, that we not only study this, but real action needs to be taken now for the safety of Canadians. It's been far too long. And as I said before, for the Sikh community, this is something they've been advocating for for more than 40 years. And this is the allegations that were made by the RCMP on Monday were more of a, a vindication of, of what the advocacy has been going on for the last 40 years. Um, a criminal is a criminal, and a Canadian is a Canadian. We should not look at any type of religion. This has nothing to do with religion. Or, or anything like that. This is simply about foreign interference happening 
and Canadians feeling unsafe in Canada. And that is a very, very serious thing that we need to address here. And I'm very, very happy my Conservative colleagues and I, we all want answers on behalf of Canadians. And so, um, you know, as our leader has said, any foreign interference from any country, including India, is unacceptable and must be stopped. And that's why we're here today. Um, and given that uh, uh, we know all this information, given the, the murder of Hardeep Singh Nijjar from last year, I, I do also want to point out the fact that in the U.S., they went from allegations to arrests in one week, whereas under this Prime Minister, there was allegations and and absolutely nothing happened after that. It kept the communities at large feeling very unsafe that these allegations were taking place and that this could t happen to anybody. And no arrests were made immediately, just allegations were made. So that is another thing that I hope this we can cover in this study. Um, and, and given all of that, uh, Mr. Chair, I'd also like to uh, just add a few people onto the list, if my colleagues would uh, agree to that. Um, so I would like to amend some of the witnesses that, want, that we want here. The first um, is the director of CSIS, Daniel Rogers. The second, the deputy minister of public safety of Canada, Sean Tupper. And the third, deputy minister of global affairs Canada. I think just to add those three would give us a better, um, it would give us a, a wider range to be able to study this. So that's a, a I would, if you want to call it a friendly amendment, that's what we're proposing. Thank you. I'll take that as a simple amendment. Uh, so the, more, the discussion now is on the amendment. We have, I'm um, sorry, the directive CSIS, the, the deputy, I'm sorry, could you say those again? Uh, the first is the director of CSIS. Yes. Daniel Rogers. The second, deputy minister of public safety Canada, Sean Tupper. The third is the deputy minister of global affairs Canada. Okay. Is there any discussion on, on adding those uh, witnesses to the list? Um, we'll go for a vote on that in that case. Um, I'm sorry, Chair, I think I, I have my hand raised. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I missed who spoke there. Uh, Ms. Khalid, this sorry. is. Sorry, go ahead. I, I'm on virtual. Uh, thank you very much for that. and. I understand and appreciate uh, the the witnesses that are being added here. Uh, the CSIS director, uh, the uh, deputy minister for public safety, and the deputy minister for um, for global affairs. I'm just wondering, given how the scope of this motion is being uh, out, uh, outlined, um, why do we need to add these witnesses to this list? Uh, and I, I'm just I'm hoping that uh, that the member who's moving this motion can help us clarify what exactly he um, is seeking to extract from from these witnesses on on his amendment. Um, I should just clarify that apparently we don't we don't have a director of CSIS at the moment. We have an interim director, Vanessa Lloyd. So we'll consider that modification to be made. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, who's next? Uh, did you, clarification by Mr. Hallett. That's clarification. Um, thank you, Chair. Just to clarify, I think it's very self-evident uh, that the people that we're putting forward would uh, more than likely have a direct uh, impact or they had, they had a um, direct link to anything that was happening at that time. And, it, and if we want to really study this issue of foreign interference, I think it's important to hear their voices uh, in this debate as well. So, and, uh, and they do have the expertise, as we know, to answer some of these questions because they, they, they are in direct link with, with information that could be helpful in this. So I will be, uh, and I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll end it off there. Um. Uh, so if I, if I can just take the floor back there for a second, Mr. Chair. A hundred percent, I think as much information as we can get from as many people as we can get, I think is uh, is a really good thing. So I, I have no problems with these names being added. Next on my list is Ms. Lansman. I'm wondering if you want to speak after we vote on, on this amendment. Okay. All right. So uh, is there any further discussion on these uh, proposed amendment on this? Okay. Uh, all in favor of the uh, as amended? 
Um, that's uh, all opposed? Carried. Okay, thank you.